Lynn and I developed a great appreciation of our next guest through his book, Adventurers in Solitude, a wonderfully written book about his time in Desolation Sound. He was the lead singer of the indie band The Smugglers, and he's played a big role in Vancouver's alternative music scene. When big name alternative musicians would tour through Vancouver, they would often stay at his home. He will have to tell you about Courtney Love's meltdown in his kitchen. Just three weeks ago, he released a new book about his troubled relationship with Canada's sport. It is already number three best seller in Canada, number one in British Columbia. Please welcome Grant Lawrence. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to uh, Sam and uh, to Lynn for having me here. Uh, it's really great to be here. Uh, yes, a, uh, a hockey book. I had no idea how uh, competitive the arena for hockey books would be. Uh, there's mine. Uh, Bobby Orr has a hockey book out this season. Stephen Harper has a hockey book out. You could buy them all and form a team. Uh, I'm, I'm the goalie, Bobby Orr's the defenseman, and Stephen Harper on right wing. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, oh, yeah, no politics, right, Sam? Sorry. Uh, OK. So what I'm uh, here to talk to you about is uh, the overall uh, themes, uh, some of the prevailing themes of, uh, of my book, which is um, uh, really to, uh, to live life uh, on your own terms without uh, fear of reprisal or intimidation. I was never uh, an athletic child at all, uh, yet I grew up with uh, winter sport-loving parents. My dad from Winnipeg, my mom from Toronto. Uh, they were exceptional at a lot of winter sports, especially skating. And so uh, many of my earliest memories involve ice. The smell of ice, the touch of ice, and uh, the pain of ice. Uh, as soon as I could walk, it was determined by my parents um, that I should be, as a Lawrence, expected to uh, skate. And uh, so that's me at age two in my very first pair of skates. Uh, and uh, the only um, somewhat sad thing is that uh, this is probably the happiest uh, that I was <laughs> ever in these skates uh, in the living room on, uh, on Christmas morning. Uh, things really started going downhill uh, for me in a, a social level in uh, elementary school. Uh, for one thing, I wore uh, my, I had very bad knees, and uh, I had to wear uh, squeaky uh, hinge knee braces, and when I ran, I sounded like a, a litter of hamsters. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I had to get uh, these, <laughs> which, uh, which this is uh, me at age seven, gigantic glasses that my mom uh, swears were uh, really in style <laughs> at the time, possibly for a full-grown man. <laughs> They're a little humongous for my face. Uh, and of course, uh, I was a target of, of, with squeaky knee braces and gigantic glasses <laughs> that covered most of my face. I was a target of bullies that mostly wore hockey jackets. And uh, they picked me out, and, and uh, I was the run to the litter. So if I did want to play hockey, ball hockey, uh, at school, I was always the goalie, where my glasses were often smacked right off my face. And hence, I associated hockey and began to associate more and more and more with bullying and fear and violence. But I still try to be a fan because it was, at this time, an exciting time to be a Canucks fan. Uh, it was the spring of 82 when I was in grade five and the Canucks made their first ever appearance in the Stanley Cup final wearing those. <laughs> the infamous flying V. The uh, only trivia fans, the only sports jersey ever uh, that doesn't use a central crest but instead uses the entire uniform. They did not win the Stanley Cup as some of you may know. Uh, <laughs> But then high school came, and uh, puberty hit, and uh, if you can believe it, things got uh, worse for me. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, hockey, the hockey players got bigger and meaner, whereas I just got weirder. Uh, 
I think I have a shot of me kind of early to mid puberty here in a high school. <laughs> and uh, thanks a lot. Uh, this is a rare shot of me uh, outside of the high school lockers. <laughs> and uh, this was really the, uh, the lowest of the lowest of the low for me. Uh, I was, if you can believe it, a daily target of abuse. And, and this was when I truly began to hate hockey. And I eventually found my salvation through music, uh, through forming a rock and roll band, which Sam mentioned, called The Smugglers. And uh, here is one of our earliest press photos, strangely on a rink. <laughs> and it was through music that I gained uh, what I uh, had never had before, which was uh, confidence, a little bit of popularity, a little bit of notoriety. And I, I really thought that hockey and music would never, ever mix. I thought I was safe. Uh, I had chosen arts, the jocks chose sports, and never shall the two mix. Well, the Smugglers went on to make a lot of records and tour, and my opinion of sports and music finally changed when we went on tour with this band. Now, this is the Hanson Brothers, the alter ego of the legendary BC rock and roll band, punk rock band called No Means No. And when the Hansons went out on tour during the hockey playoffs, every single song they did was about hockey. They called it Puck Rock. And the lead singer even convinced my band, The Smugglers, to write a hockey song, which became a local hit during the Canucks Stanley Cup run in 1994. Suddenly, I was being interviewed about hockey, about the Canucks. And it's amazing what a little bit of an ego rub would do. I found myself becoming a hockey fan again. Now, eventually, when the smugglers wound down, and we eventually called it quits and retired, I missed the camaraderie of the guys in the van. And I, I wondered, uh, how could I regain that? And it struck me, could it actually be possible to form a hockey team on ice filled with all those wimpy musicians that I knew <laughs> who were driven away just like me from Canada's national pastime at an early age who wanted to taste it, to play it, to enjoy our game on our own terms, without intimidation, without a threat of violence or ridicule. Could that be possible? Yes! <laughs> the Vancouver Flying Vs were born of musicians and artists and comedians and children's illustrators. And as you can see, as you can see, kind of like Stockholm Syndrome, I, I'm the goalie again in the middle there. Uh, I should say I took it back, and uh, here I am uh, in net. Uh, there, I, I thought this was look, I was looking great, really intense, and that's um, when I said, I want to use this slide in the presentation, the cameraman said, it was fine, but you know that the puck is already in the net. <laughs> uh, my team is celebrating, the Vancouver Flying Vs are celebrating 10 seasons now. Together we have seen teammates get married, have uh, become parents, have kids get divorced, uh, have heart attacks and survive, uh, highs and lows where we feel like a family. And back when I was a little kid, the most untouchable mausoleum in my hallways was our school's trophy case. I would pass its glass walls every day knowing that it might as well be Fort Knox, that I would never ever get a chance to put my hands on a sporting trophy. Well, it's amazing what happens when you get a bunch of individual dorks to form a team. There it is. I've learned that amazing things can happen when you live life on your own terms without fear. From the not-so-lonely end of the rink, I'm Grant Lawrence. Thank you very much.